My name's Kayla and I work for 34SP.com. We're a hosting company based in Manchester. I'm used to pointing up for that. I point down for Scotland. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm part of my job is um, speaking to customers about WordPress websites. And as a hosting company, we get people calling us um, wanting to build their websites. Um, and they usually ask us, um, the, if it's a new customer, they usually ask, how do I get started? What would you recommend? And we usually recommend WordPress. And um, when people, when we get people set up with WordPress, the first time they log into the dashboard, sometimes they can look at it and just be a bit overwhelmed. Um, happens quite often, but um, part of my job is reassuring them, walking them through the WordPress dashboard and hopefully getting them to stick with it long enough so that they see that it is awesome and that it's not quite as daunting as it appears to be. Um, is, is anyone here making their first website? Is anyone completely new to WordPress? I've got a couple of people. Cool. Well, hopefully you'll come away from this with some, some new knowledge and be a bit more confident when you're using WordPress. Um, because this is a workshop, instead of just a talk, because I usually give this as a talk, I'm going to be taking little pauses between sections to maybe take some questions, come down, help people. If people need specific help, we'll just kind of try and make it a bit more interactive and, yeah, see what we can do to help people get started. Um, ooh, the slides are a bit weird. Oh, there we go. That's because I'm scrolling the wrong way. There we go. Cool. So one of the reasons we um, at 34SP, we recommend WordPress to new people. Um, we recommend it usually before we recommend any kind of drag and drop style editor. And the main reasons we do that is because um, WordPress is completely open source. If you have a WordPress website, it's your own website. You've got access to all the files, all the code. You can do whatever you want with it. You can take it wherever you want. Whereas sometimes with the drag and drop style editors, or if you're using a service that provides one of them, you're um, some of the time you're quite stuck in that location and you've got less freedom to do what you want with it. So um, for some people, the drag and drop style thing is very much what they would like and that's fine. But for new people, we try to get them on WordPress because when, when they've got used to it and uh, set off and using it quite, regular they can do whatever they want with it and they've got more freedom overall and that's great um, wordpress can also do anything so um, any kind of website you can imagine you can almost guarantee there will already be a plugin that does what you want your website to do so if you want to run a shop you can install the woocommerce plugin and set that up if you want a forum there's a plugin for that, social media, any website you can think of, there's probably a plugin that will help you achieve your outcome already. And yeah, that's really good. So you can do pretty much anything with WordPress. So what I'm going to do today is I've set up a little test website completely out of the box. Um, so it's your website as you would first log into it today. And we're gonna, I'm going to go through the dashboard with you, maybe configure a few popular plugins, and uh, we're going to have a little talk about Gutenberg. I'm not going to go too much into Gutenberg because they, there's a um, workshop on it later, the Gutten Bar. Um, so if anyone's really eager to learn lots about Gutenberg, I recommend you go to that. But I will be covering it because um, we need to. It's out soon. <laughs> so... I'm going to just talk through the WordPress dashboard first of all. So if people with laptops want to log in as well, I'm just going to talk through what you see when you first log into WordPress. I've not gone through the installation process because most hosts will help you set up and that would take a good 10 minutes. So we're just going to jump straight into, I have a brand new website, what do I do with it? So when you first install WordPress, you'll get something that looks like this, which is a nice page ready for you to use. Not sure if it's exactly what I need just yet, but let's log in and see what we can do with the new website. When you first log into WordPress, you'll be given a, as part of the setup, you're given a admin 
URL, a username and a password. So when you log in, you'll be able to see this. And as soon as you log in, there's all these different options. And if you're brand new to WordPress, you might not quite know where to get started. So I'm just gonna talk through a few of the sections. Um, so this is your main dashboard page. Any little bits of information you can find ahead. It's not too useful in terms of actually doing stuff for your website, but you can find out about WordPress events. You can find recent comments and um, post counts. And there's a little prompt for Gutenberg at the moment at the top. Not so little, it's actually huge. Um, but we'll pay attention to that in a little bit because we'll install Gutenberg and go through that as well. At the moment, the main places you will find yourself in your WordPress dashboard are in the posts and pages section. So you can add new blog posts in the post page. Pages is for more static content, which we'll go through and add some of those shortly. If you scroll down, you've got a comment section. Anyone who comments on any post or page on your site, it'll come up here so you can approve it, you can delete it, you can mark it as spam. Any kind of comment management happens there. The appearance tab is where you handle your theme and widgets mostly. Um, you can also configure your menu, so the navigation, you go into the appearance menu. And when you click on themes, you've already got some themes set up. Plugins, purely for plugins, would you believe it? Um, you click on the plugin section and you'd mostly be using the add new section or you'd be activating or deactivating plugins in this little area here. And we'll go through configuring, and later on I'm gonna go through configuring two popular plugins, gonna do contact form seven, which is a plugin which adds a contact form to your site. And we're also gonna do some little configuring of Yoast and I'll show you what Yoast does as well. Cause that's a, that's a plugin to kind of review the SEO on your site and it's quite a popular one. Users, you can add and remove users to your site. Um, this is quite, an important area of the site because anyone you want to give access to your site, you would add them as a user here. And one of the big things that we see a lot of people doing, and it's not the best idea, is when you add a new user, you need to really think about the role you're giving them. Because we see so many people who just add everyone who manages their site as an administrator. So bear in mind, when you're adding people as users, there are several roles you can assign them. Let's go through adding one real quick. So you add a new user here, give them a name, an email address, and some little details here. Importantly, there's a role at the bottom. The subscriber can't really do much. The subscriber can basically log into the admin section, and that's not a lot much else they can do. But as you go down, there's more and more um, privileges to different users. The administrator can do absolutely everything. It can install new plugins, change your theme. They can basically break your site if they wanted to. Um, hopefully the nice people wouldn't do that, but just in case, or just in case they might do that by accident, you'd usually want to set new people up as editors or authors. Authors can write content but not publish it for the most part, and editors can add content and publish it themselves. Um, but yeah, you don't want to be adding people as administrators if you can help it. Other sections in the admin panel are the tools, which have some, uh, out of the box, they have some import and export tools. So if you want to change hosting providers or do any kind of um, management of data for your site, you can usually do it in here because there's the, also the privacy export and deletion tools within this section. Um, Lots of plugins add additional options to the tools menu, which will go through how to find plugin configuration shortly. One of the main places I find myself in the WordPress dashboard is the settings <laughs> area. And the settings has lots of useful little things you can do with your website. So if you click on settings and then general, you can change the name of your website. You can change the tagline if you want to. Uh, usually wouldn't play with the URLs unless you've been specifically told to or you know what you're doing in terms of changing the name of your website because it can break a lot of things potentially. But usually hosting providers will help you with that kind of administration on your site. 
you can also, on there's reading and writing options, and this is for how people kind of interact with your site. I find the reading tab particularly helpful because you can set um, the homepage format. So by default, WordPress websites, when you go to them, on the homepage, you have a list of blog posts. Whereas if you go back into the general area, you can assign a specific page in the, not the general area, the reading area. You can set a static page and you can make your own home page. So if I add a page called home, or I can set it to sample page, for example, and give that a save. Now, I, instead of having different blog posts on my home page, just having a blog feed, I can have a, have a static page where I can write something like, welcome to my website, and yeah, you don't, nece you don't necessarily have to have the blog straight away on the home page, and you can reassign the blog posts to a different page as well. So say, uh, let's show you properly. So if I go to pages, add new, and if I add blog, and just publish that, and go back into reading after creating my page, if it wants to load. There we go. You can set home page, I've set to the sample page, post page, I can set to blog, never save that. Now if I go to, might not come up in the navigation yet, nope. I can go to forward slash blog, hmm, blog, and my posts now appear on the blog page and any posts I add will add to this blog page. So they're the main set, they're the main areas and settings that are in the dashboard once you first log in. Um, we're gonna go through a few of them again because I'm going to um, set up some stuff on the website and talk you through setting some stuff up yourselves. Let me just minimize this. Cool. So that's kind of the first introduction of just what each of these sections does. Um, because it's a workshop, I'm gonna try and take a break between little sections. Does anyone have any, is there anything to do with the actual dashboard and finding things that you're not too sure about? All good, I'll, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. That's okay. That's okay, because um, if you're not ready with a question about the specific uh, section straight away, at the end, I'm going to come down and have a proper chat with you. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah? Uh, I have a question. You mentioned, like, breaking the site. Um, yeah. What are things that I shouldn't do to make sure I don't break the site? Um, in terms, that was specifically in terms of users, basically, um, if you go to the users section in your site for that and just list all users, say you've got a web designer or developer or so, someone on the site who doesn't necessarily, uh, a developer not so much because they might want to change the theme on your site, but if there's someone who logs in and their job is to, <coughs> excuse me, their job is to just add content, just make sure that their roles are not set to administrator, basically. Because um, somewhere else that could happen is, say someone has, say you've got like five administrators and one of them has an insecure password, their account could be compromised and suddenly someone else can log in as an administrator. So it's just really important that you set your roles for your users appropriately. Um, we'll go through other ways sites can break um, in plugins and things like that, but it's mostly fine. Um, we're going to go through selecting plugins that are usually more reliable and the kind of things to look out for. But yeah, don't worry, your site shouldn't break. <laughs> right, uh, what we're going to do now is, oh, can't click back this. We're going to go through changing the theme on your site. Um, WordPress has a ton of themes that you can choose from. 
and I'll just show you how to install a theme and change a few settings on it. Different themes will have very di various ways of doing this. Most of the time, themes come with documentation um, on their website. <clears throat> so we'll just add one as an example. So if you go into appearance and then themes, you've got some default themes here, which you can have a play with. I particularly like 2015 out of the default ones. That's my favorite. So you can activate that one if you wish to. You can also go to this corner here. And if you like, these themes are a bit boring. I want something a bit more exciting. You can go to add a new theme at the top. And this will load you a lot of themes. You will have, you'll be put on the featured section straight away, which these are the themes which WordPress thinks are pretty cool right now. Popular themes is a good one to look at. I usually have a browse of the popular themes because these are the themes other people are using and ones that they think are quite good. So you can choose one from here. But if you've got something specific in mind for how you want your site to look, there's a little um, feature filter at the top of the themes area. And you can click on that and it gives you all these little tick boxes that you can select. So for example, say I want a food and drink website with two columns. So I want my main content and a little sidebar. Hopefully, when I apply filters, it will find me appropriate blogs for that purpose. And straight away, yeah, right. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, ho hopefully that's a bit better now. Cool. Um, yeah, so you can use the feature filter if you've got something specific in mind for what you want to, um, want, what you want your website to look like. So I can install this first one because that's got what I wanted. It looks like it's made for food websites and it's got one column, activate. And now, some themes come with bundled in plugins, which I, I will ignore that for now because we'll go through plugins as a separate thing. But if I go to my website after activating that theme, my website looks completely different now, which is good because I didn't want my website to look like it did before. So that's how you install and add themes. Some themes will come with different options. Let's see if this one did. So to access most of the theme customizable options, when you go into the appearance and themes area, there's a little customize button here. Um, some older themes have a theme options tab on the sidebar. Um, there might be a separate section specifically for theme stuff. Um, best thing to do if you're not sure how to customize your theme, if you click on the theme in the appearance area, you can go to the website of the theme and a lot of good themes have quite substantial documentation and we'll show you how to edit them. But hopefully it's nice and simple. You can click on customize from the appearance area and it should give you some specific theme options here. So I can change colors on this theme. So I can change my foot color. Let's go for a nice bright pink because I'm great at web design. Oh, it doesn't look like it's done much. Okay, well that's disappointing for this theme. Let's go for a background color in that case. Ah, oh, yes, that is hideous. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, a different themes will have a lot of different options. This one's got an option to upgrade to a pro version. So I imagine if I downloaded the pro version, I'd have even more options there. But just to show you the kind of things you can do, um, Certain themes will have tons of these options. They'll let you customize every little bit of it to different fonts, different um, colors for different widgets. Um, some of them have a lot of different options. So if you want to tweak the appearance of your website, you can go into the customize area and usually find ways to edit your theme that way. Um, I think that's it for the basic theme stuff. Um, is anyone not sure about anything to do with adding themes or configuring them at all? Like when I look at themes, like for example, I see like 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is a very good question because a lot of the themes don't actually look like what they do in the preview image, which can be super frustrating. Um, that's when I usually go to the documentation on their website because the vast majority of themes I've come across, if they, for, for example, this one that I've added, it from the preview image, it looks like it's got some sort of slider. I couldn't find any slider option. Um, Let's see if we go to the website. It should tell us how to add one somewhere. Support theme documentation right there. And we can find the theme doc documentation for Foodica. It was Foodica Light I was on because it wasn't the paid for one. It was in the preview image. Usually it's because it's just sadly not obvious. But a lot of themes are really good like this and we'll have the documentation for it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Sorry, where do you put your themes? Mm-hmm. The website won't be owned by owned by WordPress. Um no, it will be owned by the theme provider. Um, when you submit a theme to the WordPress repository, it asks you to provide a website for documentation. Um, so yeah, you, it will link you to that company's website or that developer, whoever made the theme. But it's not actually a WordPress. Uh, it, it's not actually a website that WordPress.org have made themselves or administer at all. Um, so yeah, um, depending on the theme, it might not have the best documentation, but in, if particularly in the popular section and towards the top, most of the themes people are downloading, they're downloading because they're quite good and usable. Um, so if you see a theme that's potentially, maybe it's not got fantastic ratings. Oh, I've jumped over to Edinburgh there. How have I gone there? Go back to my website. So yeah, if you go to theme details, is there an option to this? Give me a sec. I'm just checking if themes actually. Yeah, they don't have ratings. Um, oh, there we go. If you click on them in when you're searching for a theme, so on this page when you go to add a new theme, any theme you're looking at, you can click on and it'll have a rating. I, if a theme has maybe a one or two star rating, I'd imagine other people have probably struggled to make it look how they want it. So that's something to bear in mind. But yeah, I'd honestly, if you're not too sure how to use a theme, first point of call would be the website that it links to in your appearance section, because most people are nice and tell you how to use things. Just going to go through creating some pages and um, I will mildly cover the new way of managing content with Gutenberg here. So at the moment, when you have a brand new website and you want to add some content, you might do it in a post or a page. Um, as I said before, posts are more for the blog style type of content where it's date specific, um, it will appear on the website in a feed format so it'll scroll up as you add it'll scroll down the page as you add more posts. Um, whereas pages are more for static content, so the content that doesn't change, like if you have a contact form on your site, you'd put that in a page, not in a post, um, just anything that doesn't really change. So I'll add a quick post, and this is what the current editor looks like, which we'll go through the other one at the end. Um, so add in a post, today at WordCamp Edinburgh. So you can set a title there and then add some content here. And the current editor is um, quite similar to, I guess, if anyone's used Word before, um, you've got tools to do bold, italics, 
it's fairly straightforward, basic stuff. You can set different paragraph types. So if I want a heading here, I that will change the type of font I'm using and make it in a big header. Then I can add a paragraph. And to the side, I've got some settings for my post. So you can set categories. So say you blog about multiple different things, and um, you can set a category. So I can add a category for word camps. I can add a category for food, because apparently I was making this a food blog, but I've just posted about word camps. My content is on point. <laughs> So you can add categories. I recommend that you do add categories because you can, um, when people are browsing your site, they can browse between different categories if you give them the option. Um, and it just makes it that bit more nice and readable. You can add tags as well, which function in a similar manner. So certain posts with certain tags will um, group together depending on how you display them. So I'd probably put this in a similar way to my categories. You can also set a featured image, which um, what you do here is you click on this and upload an image to the site. And the featured image um, is usually something theme specific, which depending on the theme, it will display it in a nice um, kind of glorious way. <laughs> um, I'll show you what I mean. Let's get a nice picture of a puppy. There we go, that one's cute. Um, I don't recommend taking random images off websites, really. <laughs> but, we, but I'll get rid of this website, shall I? Don't judge me. <laughs> so I can click on Featured Image, Set Featured Image. Now if I go back to the top, I can preview this post and see how it looks. And there we go. You can see that the Featured Image comes above the title of my page there because it's the Featured one. It's not actually part of the content. Um, depending on the theme, it might display that in a big banner at the top, it might do it at the side. Different themes will display featured images in different ways. So you can set those per theme as well, which is quite nice. Publish that for now. And now my post is live on my site. You can also change on the status area here, you can also choose when a post can go out, you can set as a draft. So if I go here, I can change this to go out tomorrow at 10 if I wanted. So you can choose when content's published. Say you have a lot of date specific content, you can get all written up and then WordPress can um, take care of posting it when you actually need it. And now that it, now if I go back to my website, because um, my theme has this already built into it. Uh, not this, let me start again. Um, the sidebar has now added my categories and it's got an archive because I did a, did a post at November. I might not specifically want some of this content. So I'm going to just have a quick talk about widgets as well. So if I go into back into my appearance area, there's a widget section as well. And widgets are little blocks of content which go in the sidebar of your website. Um, depending on the theme, again, a lot of where stuff appears depends on your specific theme. So for my theme, which I've chosen, in the widgets area, I've got these sections to the side which are different areas for different widgets to appear. So like we saw, let me open another tab with this. There we go. So my sidebar at the moment has a search widget at the very top, recent posts, recent comments, and archives. I'm going to get rid of the archives because I don't want them there. So I can just click archives in my widget area and delete that there. I'm going to change my search bar to be in the footer. I don't know why, but I can. This doesn't have a save button. The widgets area automatically saves these changes that you make. So if I just refresh this page, you'll see that my search bar 
that was here has gone. There's one at the top as well. But now I have search in my footer. So you can customize the location of content using widgets and different plugins will add different widgets. So um, you might want a widget to show something like an Instagram feed. There's a plugin for that. So you can install that plugin and then choose where some Instagram pictures would go, for example. And that's how the widgets work. Go over to creating pages because I got a little sidetracked. When you add a page, very similar to when we added the blog post, it's exactly the same kind of information in terms of you can set a title, you've got your little <laughs> word-like editor here where you can add the content that you want to. Um, but you don't have things like cate categories and tags and stuff like that because this is very much for just static content that just has um, information that doesn't really need that kind of stuff. So if I add a page for contact, I can add some contact details here. And publish a page and people can go to that page and have that information. I'm going to just go into menus because at the moment I've added these different pages, these different posts. I don't know how people are going to find them because they don't have any kind of navigation or anything too useful for getting around my site at the moment. So if you go back into the dashboard, there is, again, under the appearance <coughs> menu, there is a menus option. And you can add navigation bars with exactly what you want them to in this area. Um, you can add menus in the admin panel here, but what, is, what I find more useful is if I click through to the front of my website and then click on the customize button at the top, you can also add menus in the customizer. And the reason I prefer to do it this way is because you'll get a live preview as you're adding them. So that's two different ways you can add menus. You can add them all in the back end and then go over to the site. But if you go into the customize option at the top, click on menus, and then you can click on create new menu. And I'm just gonna give my menu a name. So navigate, ooh, navigation. And then it will ask me to set a menu location. Um, again, different themes, different options. This theme allows me to add a menu to the top, a main menu, or a footer menu. I'm just gonna make this my main menu and see where that comes up. I click next. I need to add an item to it. So if I click add items, I'm gonna add my home page, my contact page, and my blog page. And then you can drag and drop them so I can move my blog page up. You can nest pages so I can add my sam sample page and ooh, add two of them apparently. Let's not add two of them. And you can nest them under and you can see it's got a little indent so this will appear under the contacts page. So if I have a look here, the preview has already done this for me. I've got my home page, my blog page, contact page with a little sub page which is my sample page and that's how it translates onto the site. I'm gonna get rid of the sample page and publish that. And now I have some navigation for my site and you'll be able to add that in the menus area and people can use that to navigate around your site. <coughs> Let's add it to the footer as well and see what that does. There's where my bright pink is. <laughs> okay, since my bright pink's there, I'll publish that. Yeah, so when it comes to the customi customizing of the appearance of your site, uh, beyond looking at documentation and finding out what does what, a lot of it is kind of just playing around. Um, just try different things. You'll see what works and what doesn't for your specific themes. Um, yeah. Um, is there any questions? with Because I covered a lot there, I'm going to uh, take a little moment. Is there... Anyone who's not sure about menus, posts, pages, any questions about that? Yeah? Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, okay. So when you're sharing it on Facebook, okay. Yeah, um, I don't know exactly how Facebook chooses the specific picture, but um, something I'm going to go through in a little bit is configuring the Yoast plugin. And one of the features of the Yoast plugin is it will let you choose the picture for the social post, I'm pretty sure. So I will show you, I'll, I'm going to do plugins next, so we'll go into that and you might be, basically you might be able to use Yoast to decide what comes up on your social post. Um, this is for WordPress.org websites. Um, I, I'm not too sure if you can add Yoast on WordPress.com or not. Um, if you can add Yoast, you can probably do it. Um, I'm happy to sit down and have a look with you by all means. Cool. Okay, cool. Um, that usually depends on the theme because some of them in the customize menu will have a footer section um, and they can remove credit if they want. A lot of themes won't let you do that um, because they want to be credited for the theme that they've produced. Um, you could be uh, cheeky and maybe edit it in the code so it doesn't appear, but um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because Basically, if the theme wants credit in, they've done the work and it's a free theme. I, the general um, kind of attitude is that they deserve the credit for the work they've done. Um, but some themes will let you remove the credit if you don't want it there. That, that will be in the customized menu if they're okay with it. <laughs> no, that's, that's okay. I could, um, there's plenty of people who don't necessarily want this random link to another site at the foot or so. <laughs> um, because I've realized that it's quite a two, I'm gonna quickly go through um, Gutenberg and how it differs, and then we're gonna configure Yoast, and then I'll come down and we'll uh, see what we can do. Um, I think the fire alarm's gonna go off somewhere during the session, and we'll just give it a minute and, and carry on. <laughs> right, so, um, Currently, when you go to add a post or page, as I mentioned, this is how it looks. You can add your title and it looks very much like um, Microsoft Word in a way. Um, it's something that you are quite familiar with for the most part and you can add content and use this bar to do it. That's all changing. Um, in a couple of weeks, I believe the current release date is the 27th. Um, WordPress is changing the editor in interface and it's using Gutenberg, which at the moment, Gutenberg is a plugin, but it's going to be built into core and this will be the new way you edit posts and pages. So to show you what that's going to look like, um, this is why on the homepage, when you, when you log into your dashboard, 
straight away you've got this big prompt to try Gutenberg before it's released. So you can familiarize yourself with it. So I'm gonna activate Gutenberg on my site so I can show you how that differs. As soon as you activate Gutenberg, it will show you a preview page, but I'm gonna go through it with you separately anyway. So Gutenberg's activated. Same as before, I'm gonna to go to add a post. If I go to add new, it's got a little tutorial there, but I'm gonna show you anyway. When you go to add a post, it'll look like this instead, which is very different. <laughs> and um, from the look of it, it looks like something completely new, but it actually all the same stuff as before is in there. You've just, it's just a new way of doing the same thing. So as soon as you click on Gutenberg, you've got add a title and then below you can add some content. So let's do what I did before. I've set my title, if I click down below, I can add a paragraph of text. With Gutenberg, um, rather than having everything in one word-like editor, Gutenberg handles different content types in blocks. And what blocks are? This header is a block. That is a header type block. This is a paragraph block. If I press enter to start a new paragraph, it does a new paragraph block. New block. And when I hover over it, I can see how these blocks are highlighted. And I can choose to move them if I wish. I can add, ooh, there we go. If I want to use the arrows to the side, I can move them. I can drag them up and down. I can add different types of blocks. The, what I'd recommend usually when people are asking me to get them started with Gutenberg, adding different block types, the easiest way to do it is to use this plus in the corner. So um, I can add an image from there. Let's, go to my media library and add our dog in here. And then I've got a little caption area here. And yeah, this is, ba this is basically how Gutenberg works. I'm trying not to go too deep into it because I could um, go, in, go into it for ages because cause it's such a new thing. It's um, people are asking us a lot of questions on how to add content and do different things with Gutenberg. But basically, it's just a case of, instead of having a paragraph of different types of text, like headers, um, images, all in one set location, you add things block by block. And if you go to the side menu here, this is all the same stuff that was on the classic editor, so you can Set your categories. You can change the permalink of your website, which it, this is all stuff that's doable on the classical editor. It's just it's just a new way of doing it. And if people want to learn more about Gutenberg, I highly recommend going to the Gutenberg bar later on, um, because I'll be there and I'm happy to sit down with people and create some posts in Gutenberg. And yeah, I really hope people give it a shot before <laughs> before it comes out and then. Yeah, it might be a little bit confusing. Can add our tags. But yeah, uh, if I publish that, works exactly the same way. And it's the same for pages as well. That's the same kind of content I could create in the classic header. It's um, just a little bit more, it, I, I feel like it's a different kind of mentality to adding content because you do things block by block instead of just, here's all my content. So yeah, um, if you're starting a new site, I'd recommend giving Gutenberg a try sooner rather than later because it's what's gonna come in core soon and yeah, it'll be, it'll be fine. <laughs> um, it's not, not so much a de design tool as more of a content adding tool, you can uh, you don't think of it as something that kind of changes the overall appearance of your site. You can have different looking pages, like you can set cover images for pages, depending on how your theme looks. Um, but uh, 
I tell people mostly to think of this as just the same way you add a blog post. Um, if you want to edit the way the site looks, it's always going to be something more to do with the theme and choices you make in the appearance section. Um, but yeah, if anyone's unsure about Gutenberg, um, the Gutten bar later on should be really helpful. Okay, I'm going to quickly add a plugin before the fire alarm goes off. That's kind of my dun dun dun. So, add in a plugin, go to the plugins menu, add new plugin, and I'm going to install the popular plugin Yoast SEO. And what Yoast does is um, it's basically kind of like a review plugin for your content, which I'll show you what I mean in a second. So I've so I've searched for Yoast, installed it, clicked activate, and that's installing Yoast on my site now. And hopefully it will refresh. There we go. So that takes me back to my plugins page, and I can see that. Yoast at the bottom is activated. Different plugins add different content to different areas of your site. So when you install a plugin, it can be really unclear what's actually changed. Luckily, similar to, be, similar to with the theme, if you go to the plugins area and click on the view details, this gives you the plugins page on the WordPress repository. So say you add a slider plugin and you're not sure how to use it, you can click on view details, and there's FAQ sections, um, screenshots sometimes are helpful, but you can also click on the plugin homepage, which will take you to the developer's homepage, and you can find documentation there, or you can go to the WordPress.org plugin page, and there's forums, and you can ask questions, and people will generally try to help you use the plugin. But yeah, if you're not sure how to use a plugin as soon as you install it, you can find that information there. I know what Yoast does, so I'm going to quickly show you. When I go to add a new post on my page, actually, uh, yeah, let's leave Gutenberg on because this is the <laughs> this is the way it's going to be. So I can create my. I'm very diverse on my content, so I can create a post about WordCamps. I went. Type today. And it was fun. So I've created a post now. You might have noticed that below my post content now, I have this little Yoast SEO tab. And this, this is what Yoast does. It doesn't do, you can't actively see it doing too much most of the time. But this is what the Yoast plugin does. It basically reads your content and gives you a review of how SEO friendly Yoast thinks it is. So the way it usually works is what I do is I go down to the focus key phrase and type in, basically when you create content, um, you might have a keyword in mind or there's a spe specific thing your post is about. And when you go onto Google, oh, I want people to type in this and see my blog post. So I want people to type in WordCamp and see my blog post. And as soon as I type in WordCamp, I get this very angry looking red smiley. I don't think the angry smiley suggests that I'm doing good SEO. If I scroll down, it's gave me this extra information here. So basically, Yoast is kind of color coordinating what's good and what's not. So I've got a few good points there, which are the green dots. So key phrase is in the introduction. Yes, that's great for SEO. Key phrase length, yep, these aren't, I, I've not done a lot to make this post very good. Um, but helpfully, Yoast gives you the red and orange marks, and it tells you what it thinks you can improve on per post. So for example, it tells me I should add internal links, so I should link to other pages on my site. I should add the key phrase in my title, which I put word camps, if I change that, you can kind of fool it. And now I've got a green mark, but I can't imagine that really helped my SEO at all. So um, what I'd say with Yoast is some of it's helpful, some of it um, 
can be cheated a bit. So what I usually say with Yoast is, write your content how you want it. Have a look at what Yoast makes of it. You're always going to get um, some red, some green, some orange. I wouldn't necessarily try to get every single dot green because you'll end up with a post that sounds very robotic because you've been just trying to please Yoast. You've not been trying to write this nice, fluent blog post. What I usually do with Yoast is I write a blog post, have a look over this, and I'm like, oh yeah, I could add an internal link here. I can, make, I can add a few more words for the post count. And then when you publish it, or, or just save it, you don't have to publish it, this icon at the very top is kind of an overall score. So my overall score is more in the orange than the kind of red area. So I, so I kind of go off that one more than trying to please every single green mark. Because every time I try to please every single green mark on Yoast, my post sounds like complete rubbish. But Yoast is, is a very popular and very good plugin for just kind of giving you a little bit of feedback on the content that you're doing. So I wouldn't take everything it says as you have to do this. It's just more of a, oh, FYI, you could add a few links, you can do this. And yeah, if something sounds reasonable and sounds quite natural for the post, then yeah, I'd do what Yoast tells you to do. And that, that's an example of adding a plugin and using it on your website. You can add plugins for contact forms, which fire alarm's about to go off any second, but let's give that a go. So if I go to add a different type of plugin, I can show you how it's completely different to Yoast and how you don't do any of the same stuff. So, go, well, apart from the add process. Go into plugins, add new. I want to add a contact form plugin because I don't have a contact form on my site yet. If I type in contact form. Um, I'm going to go for the first plugin that I see here, which is contact form 7. It's got over a million active installations and a really good rating, so I think that sounds pretty good. I'll install that. There's tons of contact form plugins, 127 returned in that search. So if I didn't like contact form seven, I could probably find one that I do like. We'll activate that. And again, I go to the plugin page and it doesn't look like a lot's really changed. Um, I don't know why I expected. I want to add a contact form to my site, and I notice this. There's contact to in my sidebar now, so I can click on that, and this is what contact form seven does. It basically allows you to create new contact forms here, or it gives you a very basic one out of the box, and it adds this little, each contact form has something called a short code assigned to it. So I can copy that, I can copy that short code, and if I go to a page, maybe the contact page that I created before, click on that, and this is how short codes works, work. A lot of plugins uh, use short codes to allow you to place bits of content where you want them. So if I paste that in there, in my content, update that, hopefully when I preview, I might have a contact form. And I do, yay. That's a good question. If you, by default, contact form seven will send the email to the admin email on your website. So the one that's in the settings area, but you can change that. So if I go back into contact, click on the contact form that I added to my website. There is a settings area, that's not the right one. Mail, Mail is the tab I'm after. And by default, it's set to use my email, my email that I signed up to the website with. I can change that to whatever I want. So different contact forms you can put to different emails. Say you've got a contact form that should be going to 